Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just two comments to uh, some of the comments you made about. It. First of all, this is the first public hearing in two and a half years. I believe the public has a right to know about what our Iran policy is. And we have not had a public hearing in two and a half years. Uh, secondly, uh, I, I would just say, as someone who was the staunchest opponent of the JCPOA, that in fact, leaving the JCPOA without a strategy at the end of the day, without allies at the end of the day, has not left us in a better position. I don't care for the JCPOA. But by the same token, leaving without a strategy has not led us to a better position. Uh, Mr. Hook, isn't it true that uh, Iran has hijacked oil tankers? They did take one oil tanker from Omani Waters. Isn't it true that they have struck oil tankers? Yes, they have. Isn't it true that they had a stealth attack on the Saudi Arabia's oil refineries? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes. Isn't it true that Iran has exceeded the limits imposed on a stockpile of uranium? Yes. Isn't it true that it has enriched uranium to higher levels of concentration than permissible in the JCPOA? Yes. Isn't it true that it has begun using more advanced centrifuges for enrichment? Yes. So when I listen to that, and I could go down through a list of other things, we are right now in a worse position vis-a-vis -vis Iran than we were before, than we were before. Let me ask you something. Withdrawing troops in northern Syria and greenlining Turkey's brutal incursion gives new life to ISIS and hands over the keys to our national security to Putin, Iran, and Assad. All the sanctions in the world aren't going to fix that. Does the administration have a plan for countering Iran in Syria? And if so, can you explain what it is and how will it will account for recent gains by Iran-backed pro-regime forces that are filling the vacuum that we created in northern Syria? Can I, I'd like to answer your first question, and I'll take the, the next one. Um, I didn't pose the first question. I posed a, a question as it relates to this, so would you answer that one? Can I comment on your first question? If I get t enough time, but first let me answer my question. Um, the, the president's decision with respect to Syria uh, is not going to change our Iran strategy or the efficacy of it. Uh, and so we are, um, uh, Iran has given Assad $4.6 billion in lines of credit and billions more. Um, they have sent 2,500 of their own Quds Force fighters and they have helped mobilize 10,000 Shia fighters uh, to support Assad. Um, our, our, our diplomatic work that Ambassador Jeffrey is heading is to, is to ensure, as part of a political solution, that all of the forces uh, in Iran under Iranian control have to leave Syria. And we are withholding our reconstruction assistance for Syria as one of the levers that we have. And, and, and you really think that after having withdrawn and, and let uh, the Iranians... Uh, what we have here is something that we, by our presence, helped avoid. We have the possibility of a land bridge that Iran has sought over Syria to attack our ally, the state of Israel. What commitments do we have from any of these parties that, in fact, they will prevent Iran from moving fighters and supplies from Iraq through northern Syria? I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Iran isn't a, an agent of Russia. They have their own interests. They have spent their own blood. Russia is not going to tell them, okay, Iran, now, thank you for your help. It's time to get out. They're going to have their own interests. And all we have done here is perpetuate their interests and created a greater risk for our ally, the state of Israel. Well, I'd say this. I think that um, our pressure uh, on Iran uh, threatens Iran's position in, uh, in Syria in three ways. It starves the IRGC uh, and Hezbollah of operational funds. It disrupts Iran's financial support to Assad. I talked about the billions of dollars that Iran has provided. Our pressure is making it harder for Iran to fund, to give Assad financial support. We're also impeding Iran's ability to sell oil to Syria. And we have sanctioned uh, one uh, shipping, oil shipping operation, and we've sanctioned Russia and a Syrian. Um, uh, one of the ways that the Quds Force has been financing its operations is through illicit oil shipments. And so we're going to keep after the oil. We're going to still keep after that. We're going to continue our do, pressure do campaign. We, do we have, let me ask again, do we have any commitments 
from Turkish or Iraqi authorities to prevent Iran from moving fighters and supplies from Iraq through northern Syria. That is something I've been with the Secretary to Iraq. We discuss that on a very regular basis to do everything well, we, we have can no commitments. To, hmm? We have no commitments. Um, I, 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 the specifics of this, I'm happy to follow up with you in terms of which uh, minister or leader we spoke with about this, but we have raised this issue repeatedly as a security concern. Well, it seems to me that here's, here's a perfect example of what maximum pressure without a strategy that ultimately brings Iran to the negotiating table leaves us in. More attacks, more consequences, greater breakout, uh, limiting the breakout time to uh, the possibility of a pathway to nuclear weapons, uh, a land bridge, uh, in addition to the president's decisions to withdraw precipitously out of Syria, a land bridge for Iran to attack our ally, the state of Israel. If that is success, if that is your measurement of success, then I, I, I have a real concern of where we're headed. Thank you, Mr. Uh, just two quick things on that. One, um, when the president got out of the Iran deal, Secretary Pompeo released our Iran strategy within a week or two. We did exit the deal with the strategy. And the, and the secretary put in place the very clear articulation of the 12 areas where we need to see a change in Iranian behavior. So that speech that he gave in May of 2018 is the same policy that we're pursuing Well, that's today. a wish list. I, not a wish I agree list. with the wish list. It's not a wish but list. That, I, you think you're going to get everything that Pompeo listed, you're going to give virtually no relief to Iran, and they're just going to succumb. No, that's well, not, I'd like to believe that's the real world. Well, I, I, but that's not the real world, Mr. Hook. Well, so here, is, not the, the real world. here is the real world. Um, we don't negotiate with ourselves, and the 12 uh, areas' requirements are a mirror image of Iran's threats to peace and security. And most of those 12 you can find in a UN Security Council resolution. Do you that believe that the more you ask for, the, the more you have Senator, to give? Senator, allow him to finish his. Sentence. Well, he's yeah. taken up my time. He's gone beyond Your my time. Time's yeah. over. I saw the chairman went beyond his time as well. So the other thing that I would th th there is, I've heard this sort of, I, I, I've heard it often said that that there is this that during the Iran nuclear deal, Iran was behaving. And since we got out of the deal, things have gotten worse. And I'd like to, Mr. Chairman, submit for the record, this is, a, this is 71 items of, of Iran regime malign activities during negotiations with Iran and during the JCPOA. It is 71 items long. And I think that we don't, we don't do ourselves a great service about understanding the historical record if we ignore what Iran did during the negotiations and while the JCPOA was being implemented. So I'd like to submit this for the record so that people can review everything Iran was up to while we were in the deal. Thank you, and that will be submitted for the record. And Senator Menendez, I'll give you the last word. Well, I just let me ask you just a simple <clears throat> question. Isn't it just virtually anywhere in the world, the more you want, the more you have to give? Or do you believe you can get everything that Secretary Pompeo asked for and just return to what was the status quo with the JCPOA in terms of Iran's relief? We, we tried, the United States tried taking a bifurcated uh, approach um, by only focusing on one aspect of Iran's threats to peace and security, and it was the Iran nuclear deal. And that has enabled Iran to expand its missile testing. That's not responsive to my question. It's a I am, question. I am As a simple proposition, it. the more you ask for, do you not expect the more that you will have to give? And yes, the administration and, and, in contemplation yes. of that. And if, if you look at the strategy that we laid out in May, Secretary Pompeo said, at the conclusion of an agreement, which we will submit to the Senate as a treaty. Which we applaud. And, I, and, and I've worked very closely with this committee to show that I think that we very much need to have full Senate support for what we're doing. And if we are able to get into talks with Iran, you will be fully apprised. It is, it is also the case that in that strategy, the Secretary said that if we can get a deal, um, we are prepared to end all of our sanctions and to restore diplomatic ties with Iran and to welcome Iran into the international community. And that's very significant. That's never happened before. Even under the Iran nuclear deal, many of our sanctions stayed in place, and so have some of the UN sanctions. They're going to start un un unraveling. But we have put out very significant incentives for the regime. And the, and the decision they face is whether they're going to come to the table and recognize that they are in, they're, they're, it's deepening isolation 
come to the United States, come with the United States to the table and other countries to negotiate a full and comprehensive deal. Thank you. 